The January fistfight between Ishiura and Hokaho reminded us of the extreme passions which accompany one wrestler's sheer desire to beat another. Wrestlers enter rivalries at every stage of their careers. They most likely respect the junior clubmate who polaxed them, the teenager who outwitted them in the high school final, the sumo school classmate who made them feel weak. But they would give anything for the thrill of beating him. The bonds of rivalry between Dai Shoho and Koto Shoho are stronger than most. Kashiwa City is central to both their lives. Dai Shoho moved there from Mongolia aged 10. Koto Shoho was born there. They both honed their sumo skills at Kashiwa Junior Sumo Club. While their five-year age gap meant they rarely fought each other, they hung out together in various settings, and Koto Shoho's father even helped Dai Shoho with charging practice. And they almost have the same birthday, August 28th and August 26th. January 2020 saw them meet in a professional tournament for the first time, an uncomfortable reminder for Dai Shoho of a five-year professional head start reduced to nothing. Seeking to validate his entire career to that point, he latched on to Koto Shoho's belt with the outside left and squeezed until his face suffused, using all his bulk to drive his opponent out with venom. Koto Shoho went away despondent and in need of reflection. He came back to the second division dohyo today with more desire and tactical planning. At the Tachi Ai, he dove in with the right to thwart Dai Shoho's left, and soon had his Kashiwa senior backed against the rope. Suddenly, Dai Shoho sprung back to life, straining over the top for his outside left and driving back once securing it. But here, Koto Shoho showed his maturity, refusing to panic when his left slipped off the belt, coolly using that same hand to knock Dai Shoho's right elbow upwards and clear the path for a second belt grip this time the crucial one. Another forward surge, and he had beaten Dai Shoho despite giving him his favoured grip. Koto Shoho moves to 6-2, and two, level with yesterday's conqueror and title favourite Tedo no Fuji, who actually looked injured during his lame defeat to Chiyo Shoma this afternoon. Beaten for both aggression and astuteness, Dai Shoho will be hurting tonight and very anxious for the rivalry to resume in May. That's how the obsession starts. And if both rivals remain injury-free, their matches will one day take on increasing importance in the top division title race, as Asanayama and Yutakayama found this afternoon. As I said yesterday, these two men turned pro together in March 2016, Yutakayama won their first meeting in that tournament and sped ahead up the rankings chart, reaching the top division first. Asanayama followed him four months later and, in July 2018, stood alongside him as a special prize winner. But a disastrous Osaka 2019 saw an injured Yutakayama return to Division 2, from where he watched Asanoyama collect the May Championship from Donald Trump. Since then, a large part of him has been counting down the seconds to their next meeting. Of course, Asanoyama hardly warms to a long-term rival screeching into view during a title challenge. Too many old memories flood the mind and prevent focus. Those concerning the last match they had on this same dohyo two years ago, resulting in a Yutakayama win. NHK co-commentator Kasugano Oyakata revealed both he and Tochinoshin had given Asanayama advice on how to make more use of his left, but that was not apparent in today's Tachiai, which saw the right hand dart towards Yutakayama's belt. Bang! Yutaka was more than ready, hurling his head into the chest, a left forearm to the bicep, the left hand landing on the throat. Crunch! Yutaka's left hand pressured Asanayama's ribs, trying to spin him. Ho! Oh, a twist, as Yutaka's attempted throat shot is parried from the right, sending him stumbling to the rope. An excited pant from Asanayama as he senses his chance to thrust. 
BAM! Yutakayama charges again, keeping face with the left arm block, adding pressure from the right. And now, Asanoyama straightens up, unable to stem his rival's flow. He tries a slap down, but merely pulls Yutaka in closer, his left heel hopping, his right foot airborne, and a meaty left arm scooping his armpit. Thud! Asanayama ends up moving like a rolling pin across the clay, staring blankly at the floor once his revolution is complete. And Yutakayama, all his frustrations released, swaggers briskly to his corner without making eye contact. He's worried a smile might break out. Dignity must come first. It was bad that I pulled, was Asanayama's response to NHK. He said even less to the papers. It was... Yutagayama's place to fill the void. I was pretty fired up for today, he began. I just focused on the left arm block, not letting him use his right. That's how I'd always pictured the match going. And for his soundbite, ever since last May, I've been thinking about how to fight sumo like that. And that's how it's paid off. The rest of today's news might be a bit of an anti-climax, Chiomaru became the first man at salaried level to forfeit a match this tournament due to high fever. His temperature was taken at 39.7 this morning. He's been in good form, so one imagines he will reappear once his fever subsides. As for the key quotes, Ornosho rude his caution at the rope when dealing with Enho, who ensured his movements would not be read with a Mainomi-style leap at the Tachiai. I pretty much kept pace with him until the middle of the bout, Ornosho claimed, but I was watching him too much at the rope, and should have just gone in harder. Kasugano Oyakata confirmed, Tochinoshin's rib has recovered since November, but his right knee still prevents him from training properly, no matter how hard he tries. His pulling inner arm throw to defeat bitter rival Tamawashi was excellent, though. Kodoshogiku was angry with himself for fighting at Shimano Umi's pace. He's now lost five in a row to the Kise man. Fellow veteran Shohozan was delighted to get the outside right grip on winless Tochi Ozan. I just had to make sure he wouldn't break that grip, he said. And doesn't the extra taping on my shoulder look cool? Takano Sho regretted losing the Tachi Ai to Miyogiryu, but was happy with his defensive reflexes when picking up win number seven. Taka Keisho frostily denied all the camera evidence that his left knee is in an alarming condition after a seesaw battle with Hokuto Fuji. Mitake Umi insisted he is not running out of steam after folding to Kakuryu's low initial impact. And... Hakuho, who still leads and can surely now only throw this one away, said he was pleased he could deal with Abby's rapidly extending arms. No major surprises there, but what might tomorrow bring? See you then.